What's up guys? If you're new here, I'm Jake and I recently realized that I look at my portfolio way too much. It's really hard to get anything done when every five minutes I open up my Robinhood account to check some charts. So I came up with a system where I keep a few tabs up on my browser while I do other work. All I have to do is occasionally glance at the tabs and Robinhood will periodically update them with price changes. This is a decent stopgap, but it's still distracting. I would rather set up a price threshold for a stock and then be alerted when it crosses it. Following that line of thought, I built Robinhood Alerts, a free Chrome extension available here. Building it was super fun, and I figured this is a good opportunity to go through my code and maybe we can make fun of it together. First of all, I made a huge mistake in not creating a design document for this. But to summarize my thought process, I wanted to create an alerting extension that stored threshold prices relevant to stocks and sent notifications when those thresholds were crossed. I also wanted to make sure that it didn't communicate with a third-party service, read browser content, or collect personally identifiable information. In the past, I've done some similar work with stock price quotes, and I found out that accessing an API for it can be annoying because all of the APIs cost money, essentially. And on the other hand, if you want to use your brokerage's API, uh, in my case, Robinhood, they'll expect your code to have an auth setup, which leads us back to the personally identifiable information. So based on this, I decided to model my extension after the strategy that I explained in the intro, in which prices are read from the title of open Robinhood tabs. And Robinhood updates tab titles with the current stock price every 30 seconds, even when the tab's not active. So this makes it decently accurate and requires no network calls. These are the wireframes I created for the UI. As you can see, I used a similar style and color scheme as Robinhood. There's an input for your price threshold, a text indication of the current price, and a submit button. After a price threshold has been submitted, you can hit the cancel button to cycle back to the initial state. There's also an info icon in the top right to link you to an FAQ page. Anyway, let's look through some code. So here's the project. Starting from the top, there's an assets folder for images and libraries, and a modules folder for classes and utility functions. The business logic lives in the background.js and index.js file. Before we get into that, let's check out the manifest. The manifest is a pretty typical JSON config file, but it's important to note a few things here like the permissions I need, the pop-ups HTML file, and the background service worker file. This highlights the APIs available to me and separates the architecture into a UI component and a backend worker component. I'll, I'll throw a diagram on screen. Index.html, CSS, and JS make up the pop-up that's visible when using the extension. The business logic here handles a couple small things like swapping themes, the info icon, and updating the DOM, but most importantly, it stores alert data in Chrome's storage API for our background service worker. For this to work properly, we need to keep a record of all the alerts submitted, as well as what stock they went with. If I could improve anything about the UI, I'd like to use a more standardized library for manipulating the DOM, and I'd like to spend some more time hunting down UI components because I couldn't find the exact inputs I wanted if you look back at the wireframe. Background.js contains all the logic to run the service worker. This code runs in the background, regardless if the extension pop-up is visible or not. The function call at the top sets a listener on the Chrome tabs API to run a callback when there are updates for the tabs. In the callback, we parse the price out of the Robinhood tab titles and compare it to any alerts we have stored in the storage API. If the price in the Robinhood tab title has crossed a price threshold we have saved, we dispatch a notification with the Chrome notification API. If I could improve anything about this code, I'd like to update it to use the same Chrome storage utility functions I wrote for the UI component and deduplicate that code. So getting into the meat and potatoes of this whole extension debacle, uh, they're just essentially little websites with access to a handful of Chrome specific APIs. And the APIs that were relevant to me, like the storage and notifications API, were really well documented and easy to troubleshoot. Uh, so the only issues I ran into were just understanding a couple nuances of the extension architecture and some of the workflow. So some things I would suggest to any would-be extension developers is use the latest manifest version, which is version 3. Try to load your dependencies locally and definitely learn how to debug your UI and service workers because it's a bit tricky. So a great thing about Chrome extensions is the deployment workflow. Once you set up your developer account, you basically just zip up your project files and upload them to the extension dashboard. Of course, if you wanna make your extension look nice, you'll grab some screenshots, write a nice description, but it's certainly a painless process for a first time deployment. Aside from the extension, I think it's also necessary to deploy an FAQ page. 
Here we can talk a bit more about privacy or security concerns and also provide any relevant links to the project. I chose Wix for this because I wanted to get the page up quickly and honestly I wasn't overly concerned with the layout or anything. And here's the final product. You can see I am on BTC right now and setting an alert. And if we wait for a bit for the price to change, Great, I received an alert regarding the price change and it only took a bunch of time. Jokes aside, this is gonna save me a ton of time. I would say I probably spend anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes a day taking breaks from work to check my portfolio. And with this extension, I think that it's gonna be a bit closer to 10, which is a lot more reasonable. On top of all that, I feel like this is something I can release publicly and good conscious because of the way it handles privacy. If you'd like to check it out, the source code is available in the video description along with the wireframes and links to the extension and the FAQ page, and I'll see you in the next one.